Hello everyone and welcome to my talk on strength-oriented supply chain education. This is a keynote address as part of the second international conference on education innovation and philosophical inquiries, a conference that was meant to be held in person at Stanford University, but unfortunately due to COVID-19 restrictions, we had to move everything online for this year. And I'm hoping that I can see you all in person next year in 2020 uh, at Stanford. Uh, let me start by giving you a bit of background about myself and an overview of uh, what I'm going to cover today. Um, I've got a multidisciplinary background with uh, various degrees and uh, expertise in different areas, including engineering, business management, uh, psychology, and dramatic art. My PhD is in supply chain management, uh, but I'm going to talk a bit today about how I brought all those areas which may seem not quite relevant into one area of research, education and consultancy, which is all about supply chain management. Uh, I'm currently a professor of supply chain management at the University of Sydney. My title is basically a professor of decision sciences, which is the broader picture of decision making in any area. And supply chain management obviously is uh, one of the biggest um, and broadest areas of decision making in the corporate world. Um, so I'm also a director of um, Supply Chain Logistics Association of Australia, and uh, I've got my research and teaching around certain, certain areas uh, within supply chain management, uh, particularly related to sustainability issues, risk management, anything related to human behavior in supply chain management. And uh, more recently, I've got my expertise um, spanning across theater and film production. And now all of these are related to supply chain management, which again, I'm gonna come back to uh, later today. So what I do today, um, in order for you to quite understand what I mean by strength-oriented supply chain, strength-oriented education in general, I have to introduce you to supply chain management, and I have to tell you a bit about uh, supply chain education and how we traditionally used to educate people and, and then how this developed over time. And then I introduced the new concept of finding your strength and developing on your on what you're good at within uh, the area of your interest in this particular case is supply chain management. Now, what is operations management and what is supply chain management? Operations management basically is any process or a set of processes that transforms input into output. Now your input could be in form of labor, could be finances, could be expertise, could be anything that you have, it could be raw material, anything that you, you, you acquire, and then you transform this into something that is considered as your output. So basically this transformation process is called operations. So this could be in various forms. It's not necessarily manufacturing. The more, most feasible and most known version of it is in manufacturing with where you convert or you transform your raw material into finished goods. But this is not really the only form of it. So for example, locational operations is when something is worth a dollar in China and you transport it to uh, Australia and all of a sudden the value increases to $10 without you really doing any sort of operations other than location change, locational change it's added value. So basically operations could be just the shipping of items. It could be the form of exchange. So for example, you walk into a retail shop and you pay for an item that you need at that time. So the availability of that item by the retailer gives them the value add and you pay for it because it's adding value to, to you and to what you wanted for that purpose. Um, it could be physiological. So for example, a surgeon doing a surgery on your brain, they are actually adding value, they are fixing a problem and, and in exchange you, you pay them for, it, for the service. So it's a sort of a service operations. It could be psychological, again, another sort of um, service operations. You pay for a stand-up comedy, you go to theater, you pay for a film, that sort of thing is basically but, mm, a sort of psychological value add to you. And it could be informational, which is something that universities all the time do. So basically what we do, we grab students from market, from 
everywhere around the globe, we fill them in with certain knowledge and we position them in industry. This is an operation because something comes in and goes out of the system with higher value. So this is an operation. Now with this definition of operation, we can now define supply chain management, supply chain. How do we define supply chain? So supply chain is a set of operations, basically. The output of one operation becomes the input into another operation. So if you look at this picture, you'd see that for you to buy a loaf of bread in a retailer, that bread comes from the wheat growing, which is the upstream supply chain where the farmers are. And then from there goes to flour factories, from there goes to bread factory, from there goes to the retailer. Uh, this set of processes, this set of operations eventually will produce that loaf of bread for you. But there are certain operations involved. These back-to-back -back operations, the chain of operations, that's why we call them supply chain, because it's a chain of, of, uh, of operations. Uh, transportation being one of connecting the, the dots, but each of those dots is where a sort of operation occurs as well. So farming, for example, or just the flour factory producing the flour, and then the bread factory producing the bread. So these are the operations. Now, this is a supply chain. And now one, when we refer to as supply chain management is basically how to make sure that these people can make informed decisions, how to collaborate. So like the factory, the flour factory can collaborate with the, with the wheat grower, can collaborate with the retailer to make sure that they, they minimize their inventory, they minimize their cost, they run as sustainable as possible. So basically it, to be more efficient and effective across the supply chain rather than each entity within the network being efficient. It's basically a teamwork of everybody within that, within that supply chain to benefit. This is the art of supply chain management. Now, when we say supply chain management, it's part of it is technical, is like tools and techniques and like optimization models, uh, anything related to technically designing a supply chain, planning a supply chain, scheduling the different activities within the supply chain. And part of it is very qualitative, basically the management of human, the management of people, the relationship building and management, the collaboration with your customers, with your um, suppliers, that sort of soft skills are also needed. So supply chain is quite complex as such because part of it is psychology, Part of it is technical, which is analytical, which is engineering, which is, and then is also managerial uh, perspectives. And now you can better understand why I did have, do have that sort of diverse background because all of them are relevant here. Uh, and, then, and then this can be applied everywhere in different fields. So for example, you could apply supply chain management to, um, to universities, as I explained before. There are certain processes to produce a student. So we have to first do the marketing to acquire the right students for our programs. And then the students go through a set of processes. Each process is basically a unit of study. There's a course that you complete. Each of those will educate you. Eventually there is one student which knows technical details of a field and has so much experience about um, that particular area of, of uh, his or her interest as the output of that system. This set of processes, set of operations is the supply chain management. So a university does have a supply chain. I don't know any business in the world that doesn't have a supply chain. Every business in the world has a supply chain. Basically every individual also has a supply chain. We'll come back to this later as well. So with that definition of supply chain management, let's move on to uh, supply chain education. Now, how do we teach supply chain management? Traditionally, we use uh, textbooks. And so there are very good textbooks in market, which do explain the concepts, the background, um, the foundations of supply chain management. They do explain uh, some real life experiences. They, they, they actually quite holistic. Over time, they learned and those textbooks are, are much more useful than they used to be before. This is a traditional way of teaching supply chain management using textbooks, like any other area. 
Now, the more developed and more advanced and obviously more difficult way of teaching it is practice-oriented education. What do I mean by practice-oriented? So your the program design and the, and the curriculum of the program should be informed by what actually happens in industry. So we have to go out and talk to industry practitioners and find out what sort of changes and trends they see in industry and then we bring them into our program. So the program design is informed by industry, by industry practice. Now, for example, we had COVID-19 now and I'm pretty sure most of the supply chain programs in the world will change as of this year because we now need more resilience and risk management material compared to what you used to have before. So anything related to sustainability didn't even exist 10 to 15 years ago, but now every program, supply chain program does have some sort of ingredient of sustainability. And that's how the programs are informed by the society trends. So, and then the program should be also taught by those who do have some relevant industry experience. So the teaching staff should also be experienced. Uh, then to make it practice oriented, we also use real cases studies or we use uh, games, um, supply chain simulation games. And these games usually are that each student role play a particular uh, supply chain um, process or activity or becomes a, a, a stakeholder in the supply chain. And then they, these supply chains really compete to each other throughout the semester. These games are very common these days as well. So this is basically to give you a good, give students a good uh, replication of what happens in reality. Now, if you go one step further, you will have to place students to industry, in industry to basically tackle real problems. And this is what we do in the last semester of our master's program. So last semester where the capstone unit um, is, so basically what we do, we give students real problem in industry to make sure that they are capable of solving those problems before graduation. So this is, these are, these are rather common uh, sort of practice oriented education around the globe. Now I want to go one step further and introduce you to strength oriented supply chain education. My argument is that you shouldn't be good at everything related to supply chain management. You should only be good at things that is your strength area. So something that is not in your strength, you can never be very passionate about and you can never be good at it. So you need to find out what is it that is your strength. This is not very difficult. This is well researched. Let us define what strength means. Now, my colleagues um, uh, the, from America, they've, they've got a book. If you, if you want to refer to that book, most of the material in this slide is from that book. And this is called uh, Now Discover Your Strength. And there are many different um, books on, on this particular topic as well. Uh, Marcus Buckingham has, has got a lot of new material on this topic as well. But all that argument is that we do have different categories of talent. You have to identify your talent area. And talents are 34 different categories, according to uh, uh, Dr. Clifton and, and Buckingham in, in his books. Um, these categories are from, as you can see in the, in the table here, there are 34 different categories of talents. You could be very good in analytics, for example, if you've got analytical mind, then you're good in analytical, um, you've got analytical talents. So for example, if you've got empathy, you've got a category for, your, for yourself. The good thing is out of these 34, there is no individual in the world that is not good in at least four or five of these, of these talent areas. Now, once you know your talents, let's say you're good at 10 of them, that doesn't mean these are your strengths. These are your talents, you're good at them but that's not your strength, unless you also have passion in it. So something that you've got talent in and you've got passion in it becomes your strength. You have to discover your strength. This must be done in earlier stage of life. And unfortunately, our educational system is not designed for that purpose. So I'm trying to do this partly in, in my teaching and in my research activities and in my uh, consultancy in a way that I discover what 
talents individuals have. I mean, I don't. I mean, there's not something that individuals do. There are certain tools and approaches about this. So you discover what your talent areas are, and then you understand what is it that you've got passion in. The combination of the two becomes your strength. And then once you know your strength, you position yourself in what you want to do in that particular area. In my area of expertise, for example, which is supply chain management, I've realized that if you're good, for example, in the strategic um, thinking, then you should go more toward supply chain design, more toward process design, more toward sort of product design, because it needs strategic mindset. You need to think ahead. You need to know what the future will look like. You need some futuristic mindset. But if you're good in relationship building, for example, I mean, as you could see here in these in these uh, 36 categories, these are broader, uh, 36 broader categories, which you can see that there are, there are four domains, basically. They, these are categorized in four domains. So you have to find out which domains you're, you're better compared to others. So for example, if you're good at relationship building domain and influencing, you should go more to a procurement or sales and marketing rather than because you've got the passion in it. You've got the passion in building relationship to influence others rather than just being good at everything in supply chain management. Supply chain management is quite broad. There is no way you can do everything within supply chain. If you don't have the analytical mind, for example, you can't be good at supply chain design and planning. planning. So basically, if you're not good in execution, you can't be good at technical, the tactical and operational planning. So you need to know which areas are your strength. And this is valid really to any other area in the world. So I'm using supply chain as an example, but this is really valid to anyone with, from any background. Like I've got interest personally in theater and film production. And what I did, I, all my expertise in supply chain, I moved it toward film and theater production because every film, every theater is basically a supply chain to me. So I look at film industry from a supply chain perspective because to me, it's basically the acquisition of the right actors, actresses, script, director, cast and crew and whoever you put together to produce something and to deliver it to the market. There is also marketing involved in it. There is procurement involved in it and there is production involved. So basically this is a full supply chain. I made film production related to my discipline. Psychology is the same because of my personal interest in psychology. I moved my supply chain research more toward what's related to human. What sort of biases you have in your decision making and how we can eradicate those biases. So you can see that supply chain could be quite broad and you have to narrow it down to specific areas which will become your area of expertise and interest. I hope you found this interesting enough uh, to attend my future talks on this topic. This is my passion. Monday is a good day of week for me because I love what I do. I enjoy every day of the week as much as weekends. See you next year in the same place.